Joseph and his role as father. Though Christ was not his biological son, Saint Joseph exercised real fatherhood over the Lord. Mary herself describes Joseph to Jesus as your father. On this day, we contemplate the great mystery of Saint Joseph's role as father to the one who made all things. Behold the faithful and prudent servant whom the Lord set over his own family. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read in Saint Luke, after three days they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to how is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? Truly, sons are a gift from the Lord, a blessing, a fruit of the womb. We hear in, from Pope St. John Paul II. The Church deeply venerates this family and proposes it as the model of all families. Insert it directly in the mystery of the Incarnation. The family of Nazareth has its own special mystery. And in this mystery, as in the Incarnation, one finds a true fatherhood. The human form of the family of the Son of God. A true family. Form, human family, formed by the divine mystery. In this family, Joseph is the father. His fatherhood is not one that derives from begetting offspring, but neither is it an apparent or merely substitute fatherhood. Rather, it is one that fully shares an authentic human fatherhood and the mission of a father in the family. This is the consequence of the hypostatic union, humanity taken up into the unity of the divine person of the Word, Son, Jesus Christ. Together with human nature, all that is human, and especially the family, as the first dimension of man's existence in the world is also taken up in Christ. With this context, Joseph's human fatherhood was taken up in the mystery of Christ's incarnation. On the basis of this principle, the words which Mary spoke to the twelve-year-old Jesus in the temple take on their full significance. Your father and I have been looking for you. This is no conventional phrase. Mary's words to Jesus show the complete reality of the incarnation present in the mystery of the family of Nazareth. From the beginning, Joseph accepted with the obedience of faith his human fatherhood over Jesus, and thus, following the light of the Holy Spirit, who gives himself to human beings through faith, he certainly came to discover ever more fully the indescribable gift that was his human father. Let us stand. Confident in the Father's love for us, we turn to him in prayer. Eternal Father, have mercy on us. Lord, you made St. Joseph so holy as to be the model for all fathers. Through his intercession, lead all fathers to serve their families with selfless love. Eternal Father, have mercy on us. St. Joseph's fatherhood was taken up into the mystery of the Incarnation. May every aspect of our lives be at the service of your providential plan. Amen. 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 Amen.
Saint Joseph accepted his fatherhood over Jesus with the obedience of faith. Increase our faith so that we may embrace him as you set before us. Eternal Father, have mercy on us. And let us now mention our particular needs during this domain. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, O woman, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer at the bottom of page 16. Eternal Father, it was your will that your Son should entrust himself to St. Joseph's paternal love and protection. Through the light of the Holy Spirit, may we understand more fully the mystery of St. Joseph's fatherhood, and be drawn more closely to your Son, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mass will begin in a moment. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the soul of Anita Carmen. I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. You should cry to me in any distress. I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. We implore your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. Thus says the Lord, this is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice, then I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you, so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you untiringly all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me, nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, they will not answer you. Say to them, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord its God or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the 95th Psalm. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute, and when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others to test him asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, 
How will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebub that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do you, do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Who is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, since Ash Wednesday, the first words spoken every morning become these. Today, if you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your hearts. Those are the opening words of the divine office. And that leads us into the recitation of the psalm, which is our responsorial psalm this morning. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. How, how do we do that? How do we do that day in and day out? How do we keep our hearts ever attentive to the Lord's voice, speaking to our hearts? Just as yesterday we considered that what it was to fulfill every one of God's commands. So today, in both the reading from Jeremiah and in Luke, we see the next stage of fulfillment, which is obedient surrender. Obedience is never easy. It calls us beyond ourselves, and it calls us to challenge ourselves and to allow ourselves to be challenged. Indeed, as we keep saying over and over again in this season, if today you hear his voice, it's that we may, our hearts and our ears may always be attentive to follow the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that the Lord gives us. Just as in Jeremiah, there was the struggle to do what God commanded. And therefore, because of that, the voice of the Lord becomes not just a voice of inspiration to do better, but it becomes a voice of correction. And as in Luke, what we see is the great effect of a lack of obedience that leads us into sin, and that is the division of the body of Christ. The desire of Christ to speak to our hearts that they may not be hardened, is that we may be one. One in the Lord, one in the Spirit, and one with one another. That's where the surrender comes. And to be able to surrender, we have to be open to following the plan greater than Today, how is God calling to your heart and mine? How is he calling to us to follow him ever more fully with a complete and whole heart? Will we be suspicious, as we heard in Luke, or will we simply be obstinate and deaf and disobedient in each of us claiming our own way? By the mercy of God, may we become one 
as we hear his voice calling us to recognize his call to us to come back to him with a full heart that he may make us one. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord set sacrifice in your hands, the praise of the Lord in your name. Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you. And do not let them cling to false joys, for you promise them the rewards of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, O Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in providence, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bonds of unity and obedience between the faithful and the pastors of your people, especially with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Robert, his assistant, and the entire order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially Anita, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them, we beseech you, to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, your servants, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Sebastian and our Holy Father, St. Dominic, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. <coughs> our daily bread. And 
those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. <clears throat> Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God. In this minute. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes.
Let us pray. And graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your salvation, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remember the holy hour tonight from 7 to 8. You can be with us virtually or in person. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> may Almighty God bless you. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, of the power of God, Cast into hell Satan, all evils.